prepare, cooperate with me today. I think that's good. I have lost over 100 pounds following the ketogenic diet, and in today's video, I will be sharing with you the meals that were my go-tos, realistic, easy, simple meals that you can have on keto. So let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Janet, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button, give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here and watching my videos, doing all the comments, doing all the likes, and just being here and watching my videos. Thank you so much and welcome back. It is Tuesday night, I just got home from work and I am going to make a hamburger casserole. Um, it's actually gonna be pretty simple, so I am going to include this with kind of like a what's for dinner series for a couple recipes. So let's get right to it. I will have this recipe linked down below as well, so let's get started. All right, you guys, first we are going to preset our oven and we are going to have it at 400 degrees. And then I'm going to get a smaller casserole dish and just um, lightly spray that. And I'll, well, I'm actually gonna put olive oil in it. I don't have any spray right now, so I'm just gonna do it with some olive oil. So let's do that first. All right, so this is the casserole dish that I'm going to be using. It's just like um, an eight by eight um, casserole dish. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. And I'm just going to brush that all around the casserole dish. And then we will get started cooking for our meal. So I might have um, some green beans as a side for this. Um, I just took some hamburger out and I wasn't sure what I was going to make. And I always think that, you know, a hamburger casserole is always, always an easy way to make supper. All right, so we are just going to put that aside for now and then we will get started on frying up our ground beef. So as you guys know, and I mentioned in my videos, we are hunters. So we either have elk or deer meat. Um, my husband uh, butchers all of our own meat as well too. We're just so we're going to chop this up and let it fry up a little bit. Cooking, I'm gonna add in my seasonings and I'm going to use some pink Himalayan salt. I'm just gonna use a little bit, not too, too much, because I am going to add some garlic salt as well. It calls for garlic powder, but all I have is garlic salt right now, so that is what I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to put some black pepper as well in there. And I'm also going to put in some minced onion in there as well too. And I'm also going to put a teaspoon of the cayenne pepper. I don't like things too, too spicy, but I feel like this is gonna give it a flavor. Um, so I am just going to put a teaspoon that it calls for in the recipe, and that's all I'm going to put in there. And there we go, that is all the seasonings that it calls for. And then we are just going to let this cook up and mix in all the seasonings and then we will add our next couple items and then that is going to be it we are going to put it in our casserole dish and then pop it in the oven so nice like i like easy you guys you know that um and this one is really really nice and easy especially when you're coming home from work and you need a quick idea i always find a casserole is like a good way to go so I'm just gonna finish cooking this and then we will be back to put in our next ingredients. Right, next, I am going to put in some cream cheese and I'm just going to slice it up and kind of evenly distribute it in the ground beef just so that it, it's easier to melt instead of just having like one big chunk in there. So let's put that in there. And I just have this on a low heat. And then we are just going to give this a stir and let all the cream cheese melt. And then, once the cream cheese is all, all melted and it's almost all done, then we are going to add some shredded cheese in it as well. All right, so this is almost done. I turned, um, actually I turned the stove off and I'm just gonna add some cheese with that. Some, I'm gonna add a mixture of this mozzarella and cheddar. I just have a small bit left in the package that I'm gonna use up. 
Then I am going to put a little bit of Parmesan cheese as well in there. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of matzo. So we are gonna use kind of different cheeses and give it some extra flavor. And also some matzo cheese. And there we go. And we are just gonna give that a stir to make sure that it's kind of all well combined and a little bit melted. And then we are going to put it in our casserole dish. I'm just gonna put it in the casserole dish. Like I said, you guys can make this bigger um, depending on your size of your family. Um, like I said, we just kind of have like a family of three right now. So um, I've kind of just adjusted and cooked a little bit like smaller portions. But you guys can feel free to make even like a nine by 13 pan of this. Um, depending if you do have a large family. And then I'm going to put a little bit of matzo cheese on the top. And then I'm going to put it in the oven just for about 10 minutes. All right, now it is ready to put in the oven and then we will check back in about 10 minutes. Guys, and while that is in the oven, I'm just going to make some frozen green beans. So I like to use frozen. Um, it just stays fresher that long, that much longer, I feel. I feel like if I don't use them up in a few days, they do um, start going bad in the fridge. So I'm just going to use the rest of these frozen green beans. I put a little bit of water in this dish and I'm gonna put it in the microwave, I think, really fast. Yeah, just from five to seven minutes. So that's perfect. And by the time these are done, then probably the casserole will be done. So I'm just gonna put this in the microwave for about five minutes and check on it then. This is the ground beef casserole and these are the green beans. I just uh, fried up a little bit of bacon and then put the green beans in with that after it was done and let it fry up for a little bit. But this is going to be supper tonight. I'm going to have that actually with a diet Pepsi cherry that I found. I don't know if they've had that in Canada actually, but um, I found it today at the store where I work, so I'm going to give it a try, and that's what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. After work on Wednesday, we had to go into town to get some errand done, errands done, so I stopped at Wendy's and got the double Baconator with no bun, lettuce wrapped, and it is delicious. I'm going to be making um, my pizza, bacon crusted pizza, you guys. I have made this recipe before in another video, but it is my favorite way to have pizza. I have tried the chicken crusted pizza. I've tried, I've tried a lot of things. I probably have tried a lot. Um, and this is my favorite way to make pizza so far, the bacon crusted pizza. So let's get started. We are going to start by having some thick sliced bacon. This is the kind that I get. The brand name is Harvest and it does have zero carbs in it. That's why I like getting it. So that is what you're going to need in order for this to be successful recipe. You do need the thick sliced bacon. I love this recipe. This is my favorite way to have pizza. Last time I made it, I actually put a lot of veggies on it, and I think I even put pepperoni on it, but this time I think I'm just gonna stick to the basic cheese. So let's get started on doing the bacon weave. So I take about five or six slices of the bacon, and what I do first is I lay it all out on my parchment paper um, with a baking sheet, and we are just gonna put that all in a row and then we can get started on the bacon weave. We are gonna put um, five or six slices of bacon going the other way, going horizontal. And then what we are gonna do is just start weaving. It's just like you're weaving a basket and we are gonna do that for the whole entire thing. After we are done weaving it all, then we are going to put it in a 400 degree oven and we are going to put it in there for about 20, 25 minutes to let it get all nice and crispy. And this is it right out of the oven. And what you want to do is take two, I use spatulas here, but you can use whatever you'd like. I like transferring it onto a new parchment paper. They do say to drip or to get all the drippings off. I find that really difficult to do. So I just transfer it over to a new parchment paper. And then I put it back on my baking sheet. Then we are going to start with our topping.
You can put any toppings that you desire on this, as long as it's low carb. We are going to start by the Rayo's pizza sauce. I love this stuff. It is so low in carbs. I believe it's like a quarter of a cup. You get three net carbs. So pretty much that's what I try to use on my whole entire pizza is a quarter of a cup. Today, I did not measure my pizza sauce because I was keeping this pretty simple and be, be, the bacon was zero carbs and my toppings are going to be low in carbs as well. So I did not measure my pizza sauce that I put on today, but we are just going to put that all over the bacon and make sure that it's evenly distributed. And if you guys are definitely saucy people, you can add more sauce if you like. And just make sure you kind of spread it all on top of the bacon. That's going to be your base. So what I did today is I just had the basic cheese pizza on my bacon. I didn't put any other toppings, but like I say, you guys can feel free to use any toppings that you like that are low in carbs. I usually put a mixture of um, green peppers, red peppers, purple onions, mushrooms. I usually buy the kit that is already pre-cut. I always take the easy way out because it just saves me a lot of time. But we are going to put it back in the oven for about five minutes. And there you have it, you guys. It is all completely done and absolutely is delicious. The best way to have pizza, in my opinion. So I had half of that pizza and I had it with a Caesar salad. I always love Caesar salads. They are low in carbs, high in fat, and always a good substitute or I guess you would say a side dish with your meal, whatever you're having. I feel like it goes with everything. And this is the final product, and this is what I'm going to be having for dinner tonight. My next recipe for Friday night is going to be chicken pot pie, but it's going to be keto. I had made uh, chicken pot pie for the rest of my family, and I decided I wanted to try some too, but I wanted to make it keto. So I started out by just making some green beans in the microwave. I kept it very simple for this. I only added green beans for my vegetables. You can use any vegetables that you'd like as long as they are low carb. Make sure that you're checking um, the macros in order to make sure that it is low carb, but feel free to use whatever uh, vegetables you'd like. Then what I did is I fried up some chicken just in a skillet. And in the same skillet, I am going to put my green beans in that skillet and I'm just gonna saute it for a few minutes just to make sure that they're fully cooked and soft. I'm going to add some of the heavy whipping cream to this. Now I changed the recipe for two people. It was another one of those recipes that I could change the amount of servings. So that is heavy whipping cream. This is going to be some chicken broth that I am going to add to the mixture. Then I'm going to give that a good stir. Make sure that you keep your stove on low as well too during this time. Then we are going to add our seasonings. We are going to add some poultry seasoning. That gives it some really good flavor as well. Then pink Himalayan salt. And I'm also going to add some garlic salt as well and also some pepper. So we are just gonna combine all of that in our skillet. Make sure you're keeping it on low. We are going to give it another little stir. And then you're going to add the thickening agent. And I had just bought this a little while ago and I have been using it and that is xanthan gum. I use it in a lot of recipes. I'm so glad I finally did buy that because I find that um, a lot of recipes do call for it. So I just added that on top then I ended up covering it and leaving it for a few minutes in order for that to start thickening. After a few minutes, I, I gave it a quick stir and it was thickening up. It was thickening up so much that I actually did have to add some water to this later on just because I wanted it to, to be have a lot of liquid, right? Chicken pot pie definitely has a lot of liquid gravy, if you want to call it. And this was just too 
thick. So I added my chicken that I had. That was a full chicken breast that I had uh, fried up there and all cut up. So I had added that chicken and especially when I added the chicken, I realized how thick it actually was. So I ended up adding about another quarter of a cup of water to this whole mixture. And I did add a little bit more xanthan gum, not very much, just a sprinkle, just so that the water that I added did thicken up as well, but not as thick as it was before. This is the first time that I made this recipe, and it was, it turned out really to be simple, honestly. It was kind of a lot of ingredients that, well, more ingredients than I'm used to making. Still not difficult by any means. But whenever you try a new recipe, it's always a little bit daunting, but definitely give this a try. It was very, very easy and quick, I must say as well too. So I let that simmer for a little bit on the stove, just on low for a few minutes. Then I checked the consistency again and this was the perfect consistency. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted it to be thick enough, but not so thick that I had no liquid, if that makes sense. So make sure it's just kind of trial and error. Then I am going to put it in my oven safe dish that I have here because I made two servings. So I'm just going to put it all in the dish. Then I'm going to get started on my crust that I put on top. We start with melted butter. Then we are going to put the melted butter in a bigger container after we have it in the microwave and let it cool for a little bit. I will also have this recipe linked down below so you guys don't need to be writing notes. You can just look at the link below and make it really simple and easy for you guys. So we are going to put that butter, now that it's cooled off, we are going to put that in our mixing bowl. Then we are going to be adding our next product, which is going to be an egg. And this was really easy, you guys, as well. This was actually really simple. It was more simple than what I thought it was going to be when I was reading the recipe. Then we are also going to add some sour cream as well to this mixture. It doesn't call for a lot of sour cream, but still need to add sour cream. We are also going to add some salt. Now is the sour cream, which isn't very much. Um, I think it was like a tablespoon that it called for. Like I said, I was just making two servings, so that's as much as it called for. And then we're gonna give that a really, really good mix. Now that all of our wet ingredients are combined, and then we are going to do our dry ingredients. We are gonna start by adding some baking powder to that mixture. And the good thing about this recipe is that it uses coconut flour. So I was thrilled to find this recipe and use coconut flour in it. And when I was making this recipe, pretty much now is when I realized that this recipe reminds me a lot of the chaffles that I make. So I make my chaffles with coconut flour as well. It's always linked down below. But when I gave this a mixture and read the next ingredient, which is cheese, I was like, this is a lot like my chaffles. So it actually had kind of like the same texture and taste as my chaffles when I put the topping on. You will see how I end up putting it over top of my mixture that I have in the bowl. Um, it was just kind of like an easier way to put it on the mixture because you, after this is all mixed together and you mix your cheese in, and then you give your mixture a nice um, good mix, make sure that everything is well combined. You cannot spread it on top of your um, chicken mixture that we have to the left. You are going to want to like kind of put it in like dollops and then kind of spread it afterwards because the coconut flour does absorb really, really quickly into that mixture. So you don't want to spread it really, really thin on top. So we are going to make sure that everything is well combined with this. And then what I did is I ended up getting one of my um, cookie scoops. So I just, that worked absolutely 
perfect. So we just did that, put it all on top because you don't wanna just plop it on there and spread it all around. So I ended up using that and it worked absolutely perfect. And then after when I finally get all of the mixture on top, then I spread it out just a little bit, kind of to make sure that there's no empty spaces on the top, that everything is kind of covered. So that's what I did. I made sure that I didn't really push it into the mixture because the coconut flour absorbs very, very quickly and has a different kind of consistency with liquids than almond flour does. So after that all is done, that's it. Then we are going to pop it in the oven and we are going to leave it in the oven. I believe it said about 20 minutes and this is it out of the oven. And look at that nice and golden brown on top and it smelt like chicken pot pie, like regular chicken pot pie. It smelt so good. So I ended up making this into two servings. Um, I had half of the serving that night and I saved the other half for work the next day. It warms up really, really good as well too in the microwave. And so this is me just dishing it up and cutting it in half. This is my supper for tonight, and this is a recipe you must try. If you are craving that comfort food, a nice warm meal on a rainy day, this is what you need to try. It turned out absolutely delicious. Let me know down below if you try it. If you enjoyed today's video and it gave you a few inspirational meal ideas to have on keto, if you're enjoying these type of videos, let me know down below. I always love sharing what I eat, all the meals I'm having, what I ate in order to lose over 100 pounds. Make sure that you hit that red subscribe button, give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content, and also make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so that YouTube can let you know when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.